right now at the table, Moses Tule, who is the director of monetary policy department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Good to see you again, Mr. Tule. Welcome. Good morning to you. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Nancy. You know, it's like almost a tradition. The morning after NPC, you come to join me at the table here where, <laughs> where we'll try to break down, you know, what um, your committee has put together as well as read out by uh, the central bank governor uh, the day before, which was yesterday. So welcome again to the program, Mr. Tule. It's always a pleasure. Nancy. Now, let's get started. The market was a bit surprised yesterday because even f some analysis that I had read before uh, the meeting yesterday, the uh, conclusion of the meeting, a lot of people expected the MPC uh, to, you know, not change the rate, still remain at 14% and all of that. Uh, a lot of people have also said, okay, the rate came, but it's a little too late. What's your response to that? Uh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, if you recall the analysis we have consistently given in the past, the analysts which you make reference to do not have all the parameters for decision making which the MPC has. So very often when we uh, the MPC examine the data, then the entire set of data is not available to the people that do the analysis in the media. So you'll see always, you'll always have to give it to the central bank that uh, these people must have been looking at perhaps data that is not available to everybody. So the decision parameters are not always entirely open to, to them when they do this analysis. And besides, having heard the raise for almost 17 uh, months or so, or, or sessions of the MPC, uh, and given the fundamentals of the economy, it was absolutely important that the MPC took the decision it did to signal that it was a central bank that is very conscious about growth. Mm. I think mainly that was I, the is reason. That, is that your answer for uh, the timeliness of the rate cut? Yeah, the, the, it, 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 it's quite timely. You see, in the build up to the elections, there were all kinds of apprehensions whether would the elections be successful, would it be hitch free? So uh, a lot of foreign investors uh, took some investments out of the country. But why some were taken out, some were bringing in. Now, at that point of uncertainty, you don't take a major policy decision that engineers a shift in the policy direction. So you needed to wait to see how the issues or the gladiators play out the issues. And in this case, it was the politicians. Now, we've had elections. The course is quite clear. It's clear where the government is going. The next step, obviously, would be the government forming a new government with a new cabinet. And once the government puts in place a credible kind of, uh, cabinet that the international community and people who have business relationship with Nigeria are comfortable with and confident of, you will see that all the monies that left the country will start coming back and higher levels of foreign direct investment we begin to come in. And I think the decision was quite timely. And I did say that the people who do the analysis don't have all the parameters for decision making. Mm. How about um, the effectiveness of the NPR moving forward? I asked uh, Tajuddin while I was speaking to him just before he came in from Lagos, the effectiveness of the NPR over other financial instruments. Uh, are we still seeing, is that NPR still effective? The NPR still remains a substantially effective instrument of monetary policy. Remember, it is an anchor rate for all other interest rates in the economy. Now, it does not mean that for all the period for which the NPR was held constant, it does not mean that monetary policy was at a standstill. The central bank adopted heterodox monetary policy 
an art mixture where the MPI was held constant. There was an art mixture of other policies that went into the implementation to ensure that even though the MPI does not move, you achieved the purpose of monetary policy, stabilizing prices in the May, as well as encouraging uh, uh, growth. And you see that from all through 2016, when we went through the recession, we never reduced interest rates. Yet the economy came out of recession, and we are stronger now than we were in 2016, without the NPR being reduced. And now, that is the implication being, of the heterodox monetary policy. Yes, even someone like me was saying, you know, how much sense does it make that during that recession, we needed to see a pro-growth policy from the central bank? In fact, you didn't just say it, you attacked us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just say you attacked us. But uh, I'll be glad if you say that where the central bank has been proved right. Um, I'll be glad if you just say that. Uh, it's, okay, still, okay. it's still a work in progress. I accept that. It's still no a problem. work in progress. <laughs> okay. All right, how about having the, because a lot of people have said, Give me a CRR, reduce the CRR, and not the NPR. Though from your explanation that the NPR is an anchor rate, but the CRR could be more effective right now because of the relationship with banks. Now, let us get this correct. A child may be a member of the family, but he may not be the head of the family. The head of the family. You are getting me laughing again. There's no way no you will come here, you will not give me a proverb. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead. I'm trying sorry. to explain no, this. No, it's good. It's good. I'm trying to explain this. The, of our the yeah. head of the family is always the head of the family. We are saying as far as the instruments of the central bank are concerned, the chief instrument is the monetary policy rate because it serves to anchor, to tie together, to bring together all other interest rates in the economy. The CRR does not have that attribute. It's a very blunt instrument. Once you bring it down, it has an immediate impact. But remember the rate cut that was done yesterday, the 50 basis point rate cut that was done yesterday, was to signal, to send a signal to the market that the central bank it's a pro-growth central bank. When the fundamentals are correct, the central bank is prepared to deliver a regime of very low interest rate that will be conducive to increased lending in the economy. But when the fundamentals are not correct, and commentators and analysts keep attacking the bank, why are you not reducing rate? Why are you not reducing? The central bank does not take policy decisions on the basis of the opinions of economic analysts. No. I think we need to get this extremely very clear. We, we need to get it correct. Is it is it, that, is it, so is it that you, you also don't listen to what the market is saying, uh, or the participants and the players or the stakeholders? The market is not analysts. The, 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 market, the, market, the market is not the same. No, they are stakeholders. Yes, they are the, stakeholders. Uh, the, analysts, the analysts are stakeholders. Some of them are playing in the market. And their comments are designed to pull th the direction of policy in their favor. So we analyze market data. The market produces data. Analysts do not produce data. Although the behavior of the market may be influenced by the discussions yes. the analysts have. But by the time you prove them, one, two, three, prove that the analysis is wrong. Like in this case, expecting that we're going to hold. You don't put the policy parameters all in the marketplace for everybody to second guess you and get you 100% all the times. But the analysis are in the public domain. We make this analysis available so that when we are taking decisions, not as if we have hidden levers for decision making. It's on the same data that's available in the marketplace. But in taking the decision, we look, all the parameters that we consider may not be available to you as an analyst. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Yeah. Right, it's, it's not that they are not important. Okay. They're a very important aspect of the entire macroeconomic management framework. They are very important. Okay, let's quickly take a break. So perhaps uh, uh, Mr. Tule can actually take a cup of water. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's quickly take a break. When we come back, our discussion continues, but don't forget to join us on all our various social media platforms. Find and follow me right now on Twitter. Uh, you can also find and follow the show Moneyline AIT. On Facebook, we're also there, Moneyline with Nancy. On YouTube, we are also there. So go to our YouTube page, Moneyline with Nancy. You can check out even this episode on uh, YouTube. You can also watch previous editions of this program on YouTube as far back as two, three, four, five, six, seven years ago on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. We will be right back to stay. All right, welcome back. Uh, Moses Tule is still with me here. He's the director, Monetary Policy Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. We're looking at the morning after MPC. Uh, Mr. Tule, I would like you to break this down, you know. Uh, a lot of what we do here on the show is quite technical. A lot of what you do there at the Central Bank is quite technical. But for people watching us right now, just like you said that the NPR is an anchor rate for other rates, isn't it? An average person watching us right now that doesn't even understand the grammar that I'm speaking or that doesn't understand the technicalities of what you do there at the central bank, what does all this mean for the person watching perhaps right now in Balogun Market or Wuse Market okay. or Le someone just there watching? Let me start by the decision yesterday to re reduce the policy rate by 50 basis points. What is the implication of that? What is the significance of that reduction? And I want to give you this uh, with an analogy. Let's take it that you have a vehicle, you are driving, and there's a vehicle ahead of you. And suddenly, the vehicle wants to turn at the next turn, and it suddenly turns. And you are following him. You gave no indication that you were turning. What do you do? First, you are sent into a state of panic. God saves you if your brakes are good. I then you, you won't have a crash. You will match your brakes. You will not crash into him. Otherwise, you are most likely to have an accident. That is why when we say that the decision yesterday was a signaling rate, that 0.5% or 50 basis point was a signaling rate, was to give indication we're trafficking that look somewhere down the line our hope is that if the fundamentals of the economy if the indicators continue in this positive direction somewhere down the line we would reduce interest rate interest rate will not be as high as they are so that is the indicator that is the trafficator to the economy that somewhere down the line the central bank intends to deliver a regime of low interest rate if the fundamentals of the economy continue in this positive direction. A stable exchange rate, we continue to build external reserves, we cannot continue to receive an inflow of uh, foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment. Inflation continues to go down, the exchange rate continues to be stable, and the economy continues to grow. We intend to stimulate that growth so that it will grow at a level that is higher than is currently growing by delivering a regime of low interest rate down the line. That is why we have put on the signal, put on the trafficator to indicate that we are now turning right. That is the implication of that decision that was taken by the NPC yesterday. And that is the significance. But assuming yesterday, instead of giving that indication that we intend to turn down the road like that, we suddenly reduce the rate by, let's say, 400 basis point, by 4% to 10%, NPR to 10%. NPR to 10 it is the same as a vehicle going in front of you, not giving you any sign 
that it is turning. It suddenly turns in front of you. Just like you would crash, that is how we would crash the economy. So to avoid doing that, central banks are really very careful when they take policy decisions. So taking such policy decisions hinges on the credibility of the central bank. So I think that's, that's really quite important, and we need to let Nigerians know. Our goal is that we know that low interest rates are good for the economy, and that down the line, if the economy continues to go in this positive direction, we intend to deliver a regime of low interest rates. And that low interest rate, what does it mean, I, I, as simple as ABC? Does okay. it mean that for those, of, it's for those people watching us right now, they can approach their banks and they will have lower interest rates on their loans? The, there are some loans that, that the central bank has supported, like under the Anchor Borrowers Program. And they tell you that if a farmer is going to borrow from the bank, the interest rate under the Anchor Borrowers Program is 9%. It means that you can now go to the bank, instead of borrowing at 20%, 25%, you borrow at 9%. And it's not a flat rate. The 9% is not a flat rate. Let me explain what is a flat rate in the financial system, and what is a 9% per annum interest rate. It means that for the whole year, on a loan of 50 million naira, you will pay an interest rate of 9% spread throughout the whole year. But if it is nine, an interest rate that is like 5% flat rate, it means every month, you are going to pay 5% on the loan, 5%, 5%, 5%, which means at the end of the year, you are paying 60% on that loan. So we are saying, by a regime of low interest rate, you would have interest rates that are sufficiently low so that economic agents are able to borrow from the banking system, do business, be profitable, and be able to pay back without pains of repaying the loan. Now, uh, like I asked the governor yesterday, because I know that your, your bank, the CBN, has been doing quite a lot in terms of interventions and all of that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank so you, Nancy. Is that actually part of it? Is it because of your various interventions and, you know, all of that, that the CBN is signaling a rate cut? It's not because of our interventions. We've been intervening quite, the government has been intervening in the system since 1978. So... That's not the reason for, for rate costs. I explained to you that the fundamentals are correct. Now, we've reviewed what the GDP data is saying. We've moved in the last five quarters. The economy has grown substantially. Uh, and we expect that in fiscal 2019, the economy will even grow higher than the rate at which it grew uh, in the last two uh, yes, that is one. Inflation is trending downwards. B, uh, the BOP balance of payment, payment data, both the capital account and the current account, are positive. The action rate is stable. Uh, we are building external reserves. Oil prices are not looking bad. The non oil sector is growing. They are growing. not looking bad, but it's still volatile. Anything can happen. It's volatile. And even the global not, economy, there's, there's there are so much uncertainties now, which I also asked yesterday. If, if the global economy moves into a crisis, for example, amid all the slowdown we're seeing from different parts of the world, if, nine, if we are ready as a country to face another economic challenge. And the governor answered me yesterday, oh, okay, yes, we are capable, we survived the recession, we're out of it, we can do that. But should we take your words to the bank? Nancy? The Sir. fear of a bad dream does not stop you from sleeping. You will still go to sleep, even if you had a bad dream last night. <laughs> so you, you can't stop the clock of macroeconomic management because there are uncertainties in the horizon. That is why it is called macroeconomic management. Several moving parts together. That is why you have professionals sitting there. You are paying some of them at the Ministry of Finance, at the Budget, Ministry at the planning ministry at the central bank of the the country pays them to do that. It's just like saying sometimes people are sleeping, but your AIT is still on air. You are broadcasting to the world, but some people are sleeping. The fact that people are sleeping does not mean you should close your studios, because there are still some people out there who are not sleeping. 
So if the economy goes, if the global economy goes into a spin, it does not mean the entire world has gone into a spin. But you will still see that people will be able to manage themselves throughout that spin. So that is why we are encouraging economic agents to invest in the real sector and produce. We are encouraging people that instead of depending on the importation of goods from outside the country, why don't we produce those things for which we have competitive advantage in the country? That's the essence of the 41 items. That these are items for which Nigeria has competitive advantage, which can produce within the country. So if we produce them, we can conserve all that foreign agent you're talking about. So that even if there's a crisis in the global economy, within the size and the strength of the economy, Nigerians can still live comfortable life. That's why we are putting in these steps to ensure that the economy grows at levels that are higher than we've grown in the last five quarters. Yes, and higher than the population growth. Just last Higher than the rate of population yes, growth. Yes, rate correct. of population. Last question. Even as we move forward, the MPC was seeking after a rebasing again of the economy that was last done some years ago. What more do you have to say about that? Very quickly. Nancy, thank you very much for that question. I think it's, it's long overdue. Uh, the reason for rebasing the economy is that several new sectors must have been added to the economy that have not been captured previously. But they are, uh, they are contributing to the growth of the economy, but they are not recognized. So the size of the economy is being underestimated. For instance, there are so many sectors of this economy that are simply classified under informa sector. Uh, the informal sector. Those sectors should be recognized, monetized, and their value added to the GDP of the country. Then you will see that when that is done, Nigeria will move from its present ranking amongst the Committee of Nations to levels that are with comparable countries that are having that level of income nationally. That is why from time to time you rebase in order to update your data and bring yourself to current levels of reality. Okay. And I think that's really very important and the government should take that advice from the NPC very seriously. Okay. All right, I think I uh, uh, will come to, uh, we've come to the end of the show. Though I'm getting questions, but uh, don't forget that another CBN weekly segment will be on next week. So I will take your questions with the CBN authorities. We've just run out of time. I've seen Amaju's question, but I'll ask the 